Hello guys, welcome to the channel. This is Divine Truth Tarot. We're gonna do a video today to check in with the energies for the counterparts. We have a full moon in Libra coming up on Sunday. This moon is kicking my ass. And I can list off a couple of the symptoms, uh, the ascension symptoms that are coming up, but it's extreme fatigue, it's sinus pressure, it's uh, TMJ, it's grinding, clenching your teeth, clenching your jaw. Um, it is also shoulder pain, neck pain, uh, like a crunchy feeling in the shoulder and neck. Also, you just may be feeling very lethargic, very like literally your muscles just to move, it may be feeling like too much. So you may be feeling very heavy. There's some heart palpitations coming through, some heart chakra upgrades coming through. And that could also be your counterpart pulling on your energy at this time, like we've been talking about the role reversal that is occurring for many twins right now. And just honestly feeling depleted, just an overall feeling of complete exhaustion and depletion coming through at this time. Uh, we're getting a lot of hormonal upgrades as the DM and the DF energies, again, are coming into that inner union. So, um, so that's sort of an overview of what's going on and some of the symptoms that I have uh, felt over the past few days. So this is a very intense weekend, energetically speaking, and then it's, you know, it's sort of um, what they're showing me is this image of water gushing over, almost like Niagara Falls gushing over the side and it's bleeding into the physical. So it's the energetic um, and it's causing physical sim sensations or physical symptoms, okay? Just rest, <laughs> rest and hydrate. That's the best thing you can do this weekend. So because it is a full moon in Libra, we're gonna be looking at the Moonology deck. I've got the Queen of the Moon Oracle and then my brand new tarot deck, the Syrian Starseed deck. So we're gonna start with the tarot deck here and just take a peek and see what's going on with the energies here for the counterparts. I did post a written reading this morning, very early this morning, so check that out if you haven't already. I'll try to remember to post a link below, but if I don't, it's just the most recent video uploaded to the channel. And that is talking about the energies of this Libra full moon. and. What's going on with the feminine? What's going on with the masculine? What's going on with your inner masculine, your inner feminine? And how this is all sort of translating to moving us ahead in our journey. Uh, April's going to be a very active month. So I do feel like this Libra full moon is preparing us in many, many ways to conquer. It's like a rise and conquer theme because we are in Aries season. And as I talked about on the video from this morning, we're in the astrological new year which began with the spring equinox. And what that means is that Aries is the first sign of the zodiac and Aries is now large and in charge. The sun is in the sign of Aries. And um, Aries is ruled by Mars, which is Scorpio's co-ruler as well. So Mars is the sign, you know, Mars is the god of war in mythology. And Mars is very passionate, Mars is victorious, Mars doesn't back down. So it's bringing out that inner warrior energy, that activating energy in all of us. And I want you guys to understand that the reason that this is so potent for some of you could be that you have some very active Aries or Scorpio in your astrological chart. If you have Aries or Scorpio sun, you're gonna be feeling this the most. Uh, this Aries season. But even if you have, let's say, Aries North Node, Aries South Node, Aries Moon in particular, the emotions, uh, even Aries Rising, maybe less so, Venus and Aries, any of these uh, particular astrological combinations, you're going to be feeling Aries season. And it's quite a shift from Pisces, from the calm waters of Pisces. We go into the raging fires of Aries. So just keep that in mind that it's not going to be as calm as Pisces season. We're getting ready to take action. So let's look at the overall energies. We have the master of chalices. So the chalices are, are the cups suite in this card or in this deck, excuse me. So very interesting. So let's take a look here. Um, the element of water, Pisces, Scorpio, and Cancer. Now, when we look, let me take a peek here because I'm still very much learning this deck. And so instead of doing the, oh, this is the king. This is the king of cups. Instead of doing like you do in a normal deck where you would do the page, the knight, the queen, and the king, they actually have 
and I mentioned this in a previous reading, they have the seeker, the adept, the sage, and the master. So this is the ultimate male authority. And I feel like this is saying that the masculine, the divine masculine energy, both within us, that's on the rise within us, and the physical manifestation, you know, for those of you new to this journey or those of you new to my channel, the physical manifestation is your outer, the person you identify as your outer divine masculine, okay, and just other divine masculines that you may have in your life, brothers, um, whether it's blood brothers or brothers by soul, soul brothers, soul family, they, they're, the divine masculine is rising in the collective and it's definitely rising within, within us. And honestly, one of the other symptoms I forgot to, to list is there's a lot of detoxification going on right now on a cellular level as our cells prepare to upgrade to this crystalline structure. And as these upgrades happen, these solar flares happen on the planet, you may be feeling very overheated at this time. And this is also uh, related to Aries season because again, Aries is the, Mars is the god of war and Aries is ruled by Mars. So this is sort of like wherever you are doing battles in your personal life or in your connection or with yourself, it's all gonna be rising and coming to the surface right now. And this is, you know, this is a, a deep card. It's a deep energy. When you have the King of Cups, you have a king who is very much connected to his heart, and yet there can be some resistance, just like the Queen of Cups can actually still be hanging on to some codependent tendencies. The King of Cups can be in this energy where it's sort of like he's not fully showing his cards, okay? And that's what a lot of you are experiencing right now. I want to say this though, that as the masculine energy rises in the collective, more masculines are going to be forthcoming about their emotions. This back and forth, hot and cold energy, the game playing that the feminine was subjected to in the past by more than just your divine masculine, by many masculines that you've encountered, romantically or otherwise, is going to cease. That is going to stop because we are no longer allowing that. We are no longer sitting and allowing that sort of behavior to be a dominant theme in our life or to be a theme in our life at all. And so if you don't entertain it, then it can no longer be welcomed in as part of your reality. So don't entertain it within yourself and don't entertain it within others. So the King of Cups comes in as a master of emotion, but this is why it often can seem like with the King of Cups that he's holding back because he's mastered his emotions so much that he may be containing them instead of letting them overflow. So let's get a card for his counterpart for the Divine Feminine and it flies right out. Interesting, Adept of Chalices. So we've got two Cups cards. This is, believe it or not, even though Libra is an air sign represented by Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, th with this full moon in Libra that we have tomorrow moving through Sunday night through Monday morning, um, even though this is the energy of air, we see all the element of water here in both counterparts energies. So again, when we have the adept, that is the knight. So we have the knight of cups. So the knight of cups is more mature than the page of cups. Um, he, he, he or she has definitely learned along the path of self-discovery. And yet there's still some maturity that needs to be accomplished. Interesting. So it appears that the masculines mastered his emotions more at this particular juncture in the journey than the feminine has, just at this particular point in time that I'm filming this video. So feminine, the feminine energy is seeking mastery, but I feel like there's still some underlying anger, resentment, and even guilt or shame or blame that's coming up for the feminine that needs to be released at this time. So I feel like that could definitely be what's causing the masculine to not reveal their true intentions or emotions. Um, and you can see here, they're like, there's a mirror effect. Um, so there's some mirroring going on here. Well, if you're, not gonna, if you're not gonna play your cards or if you're not gonna reveal your cards, I'm not going to. So which one of us is gonna be the one who's mature enough to step forward and reveal their cards? And I think the feminine feels like, well, I've always been the one revealing my cards and I'm at the point now where I'm done, I'm tired of being the one to reach out, I'm tired of being the one to reveal or express my emotions and receiving nothing or not much in return or even silence in return. 
So I feel like the feminine is kind of, it's like this immature energy in the feminine where, for some, where, because some of you are actually very healed and very open, but for some of you, you may be feeling like, you know what, I'm just like, I'm determined <laughs> um, to continue moving along my path. And there is an impulsivity energy here to the night. There is. There's an impulsivity, but it's like you want to go out and express your emotions, but at the same time, you're sort of burying them here. You're burying your face, you know, in the wave. You're burying them because it's easier to do that than sort of face your emotions at this time. So what can the feminine work on at this time, spirit? What can the feminine work on to assist herself? What can the feminine work on right now to assist herself with this energy of being more vulnerable? Because there's, there's a lack of vulnerability on both ends right now for a lot of you. You're both holding your cards close to your chest. Yeah, extremes. Remember I talked, it's so interesting, I talked about the heat, the physical heat that I was feeling. Um, you know, that energy of waking up like sweaty, waking up feeling hot, just not being able to cool down. What's crazy is I'm usually very cold. So this is quite an extreme change. This is extremes and temperatures, hot moon. Yeah, this moon feels very hot. And this is also linked to those hormonal shifts and fluctuations and changes that are going on right now in the divine feminine. And um, I feel like the feminine is at this point where there's sort of a breaking point for her. It's almost like a feverish kind of energy where some of you may feel like you have the spiritual flu. You just feel very warm and hot um, and yet you can't get comfortable. It's kind of that kind of an energy. It's, it's definitely not a comfortable energy. So feminine, keep in mind that you could lash out at this time to anybody in your vicinity, in your close vicinity. So just keep that in mind too. You may want to sort of reel it in a little bit and uh, instead of um, lashing out, you may wish to journal it. You may wish, I know it's probably a challenge right now to physically be active because you're so fatigued, but if you have that physical energy, go ahead, jog it out, run it out, you know, box it out, whatever you need to do. And, you know, yeah, I feel like this this is also d directly related to the divine masculine energy because the divine masculine energy has pleasure over here. So the divine masculine may be pleasuring themselves, thinking about the feminine, or they're just trying to bring in more pleasure into their physical life. Um, but this is like a euphoric energy and the feminine's over here, like feeling it more as anger and feeling it more as like, this is uncomfortable. This is annoying. This is a nuisance. So they're feeling this in different ways. And that is actually the mirror energy because one feels pleasure. The other is feeling a little bit of pain. Um, and, and it is, it's, it's extreme discomfort, right? This, this heat, this energy, it's like, just get it out of my body. So a lot of shifts, a lot of upgrades happening right now for the DF. We have this energy of realization also coming in for the masculine. So to clarify this king of cups, they're, they're realizing that you hold the key to their hearts. But guys, they're keeping this realization close to them. They're not revealing this. They're not coming out with this. They're not expressing this at this time. And if they are, they may have expressed it and then run off again. It just doesn't feel safe yet, or they haven't received that green light of divine timing, whatever the case might be. what's the best advice right now for the divine feminine to allow this energy to really flow and so she can release it and she can go back to feeling more balanced and just more at ease and 
um, more energized again. So this is very draining energy. Expect powerful change. I mean, these cards are, yeah, expect powerful change extremes. Um, with these extremes that are coming in for the feminine, understand that, you know, there's something being eclipsed out. This is a new moon eclipse. There's something being eclipsed out so that something new and fresh can be brought in. And this is the energy of that astrological new year um, beginning with Aries, spring equinox. And I feel like eclipse season, it, there, we're being told this is going to be a very powerful eclipse season for the divine feminine energy in particular. Don't let your past hold you back. So self node, past life energy. So what do you? What is it that you need to heal from your past lives? Uh, what is it that you need to unshackle yourself with? What um, what programs or thought patterns or relationship patterns or whatever it may be? What is holding you back from moving forward? Because there's powerful change coming in. But it's like there's something holding you back and it's causing you to feel really uncomfortable and extreme of temperature, like temperature fluctuations is coming in for the feminine. So let's get a card for the masculine. What can the masculine do? Show the world the real you. Masculine, full moon in Aquarius. Masculine is definitely, definitely learning how to be more authentic, how to be more vulnerable with who they truly are instead of just showing the world what they think the world wants to see or needs to see. This is more the energy of, I'm going to show the world who I really and truly am. And in doing so, they're being inspired to give rather than take. So you may find your masculine coming in and wanting to offer you something at this time. Many dreams are also active at this time, guys. So the dream state for the divine feminine and her masculine counterpart are pretty, uh, pretty vibrant. So you may be dreaming about your counterpart. You may be dreaming about all sorts of things. A uh, good time to keep a dream journal and to document that and to look for any, just to look for any repetitive themes okay or underlying themes in these dreams because they're they're showing us they're teaching us interesting three of cups and the two of orbs i think orbs is pentacles let's see no, nope. orbs is the sword. So two of swords, decisions, decision making. So this is actually coming in here for the union energy because I feel like there, there are decisions to be made right now um, for both counterparts. And I feel like what that decision is, is up to both of you. It's up to the counterparts and what you decide on. And for a lot of you, this is energetically in those ethereal realms. Um, you know, these are different vibrations like the yin and the yang, but they are the same. They're different, but they're the same. And that's the masculine and the feminine. Um, <sighs> This energy is coming from the deeper subconscious because the swords cards speak of the mental uh, realm. So this is the deeper subconscious energy here, the intuitive mind. And this is letting us know that both counterparts are digging deeper into their subconscious and into their intuition at this time and, and making decisions based on that versus their logical mind. So there's a bit of reflection going on right now. And yet there's no struggle. She seems to be balancing these quite beautifully. And there is a vulnerability here associated with her, with her breast showing. So I feel like this is a nurturing energy that's coming through here as well. So there's a reflection, but it's not a reflection. It's less of the emotional body and more of the mental body. 
So there's a weighing here. There, there's a balance and harmony that wants to come in. There's a weighing of options going on for both counterparts. It's kind of like the energy that I'm picking up on, guys, is kind of like the energy of, is this connection really benefiting me at this time? You know, there's some deep questions and thoughts going on right now. And I feel like for the feminine, that's what the feminine is thinking, especially with the soulmates that are coming in. There's been some confusion. There's been some, well, am, is this right? Is this okay? Am I going off the path? Am I going to be punished for this? Am I going to delay union? The answer is no, no, no. If a soulmate is in your journey, the soulmate is there to help you elevate. The soulmate is there to bring you joy. The soulmate is there to help you heal, to help you um, elevate and shift and vibrate to the next level and to help you realize your potential. The soulmates serve very important purposes on this journey. And this was a, a, a contract, okay, that was preordained before this incarnation. So the feminine, you know, it's like the masculine has dissolved karmic contracts for many of them. And now the feminine is stepping into a karmic contract. It's very interesting how this is playing out. And yet I still feel union energy coming in. Could that be union energy with a soulmate? It could be. There are no hard, fast rules on this journey. And so if a soulmate is coming in into your physical reality and physical world, it's up to you to decide whether you want to entertain that or not. So three of cups, this is a time of joy. This is a time of celebration. It's a time of emotional fulfillment being surrounded by those that lift you up they lift your spirits they elevate you and again this is that soulmate energy whether it's in the form whether it's romantic i mean a soulmate doesn't have to be romantic it could be a friend that comes in of the whether it's same sex or opposite sex it could be just somebody who comes in it could be in the workplace but i feel it more so on a personal level so if, if this person comes in through the workplace they're going to end up being um significant in your life okay I, I definitely don't see this as um, somebody that's going to be just strictly work related. This is this is friendship. This is celebration. This is unconditional love. And this is about sharing with others. Okay, sharing without hesitation or limitations. Sharing and opening up emotionally. Hmm. This is about the masculine energy really adorning and honoring the feminine. And I feel like this is happening within us at this time. Recognizing the goddess within. The goddess within you. All right. Oh, you know what? Let's ask Spirit, what is the lesson? What is the lesson of this full moon in Libra for the divine counterparts, the team? What is the lesson? Conquering fear. Okay. Fear came rolling out as I was shuffling. The lesson is to release fear. And I think the term soulmate can instill fear in a lot of people. And especially if there's a divine masculine and watching this could be scary to hear that your feminine may be meeting a soulmate. So this is let go of the fear. This is going to bring you both into deeper levels of self-realization. This soulmate is a soulmate of both the feminine and the masculine. You see the, the two, the mirrored souls here, and then the third person. The soulmate, and then the three of cups, the soulmate is coming in, and they're on your side, divine masculine. So there's nothing to fear. And it's kind of like the masculine feels like they're getting a dose of their own medicine, is what I keep on hearing when I'm channeling this. It's like, oh, well, I deserve this. It's not about deserving it or, or being punished, divine masculine. It's just about being shown things from her perspective or his perspective, your divine feminine. And understanding that the divine feminine has experienced this in many ways with you, where there was an involvement with a karmic partner, and that was very painful. And now it's it's like you're being shown this is how he or she felt. Not so you feel guilty, not to shame you, not to even blame you, but just to show you. Um, and then also for the feminine to be shown, well, this is why a soulmate is necessary, and this is why it's... You know, you're not trying to hurt your counterpart. The feminine's not doing this to hurt her counterpart. The feminine's doing this because she deserves love and she deserves um, connection. And so if this, if this person wants to come in and bring that in, the feminine's open to that at this time, but she's not doing it out of uh, any, any intention, like bad intentions, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Luck is on your side, new moon in Sagittarius. So 
luck is coming in with this new moon as well, this new moon. And I feel like it's luck and love, lucky and love, because there's this interesting conjunction here with the moon and Venus that I talked about on my video earlier today. So what are the lessons from this new moon? Two of wands. Interesting. Got a lot of twos and threes here. <clears throat> two of wands. Remember, we have the two of swords, two of wands. So what do we want to say about the two of wands? Well, <laughs> there's more than one way to get to union. <laughs> There's more than one option. Uh, there's more than, you know, dig deep into your creative juices, your creative options, feminine, okay? It's like feeling like you need to choose the right path, but then realizing that all paths lead home and all paths lead to union, and there's, there's no way to mess this, this journey up. I think that's really important to understand. Um... It's also speaking of focused intention because candle, if you've ever done a candlelight meditation, it's that focused intention of focusing on the flame and then the flame sort of plays tricks with your eyes and your mind and it takes you into this deep, deep reflective state. So there's, there is an energy here of reflection. We've already seen that here in this reading, right? The energy of reflecting deeply within. Ground your passion, you know, in your dreams ground them into the physical. And for those of you still trying to figure out what is my mission on this earth, you know, should I walk away from this path? Should I walk forward towards this path? I feel like a lot of you may be asking yourself, is it time to step away from this path or even this twin flame journey for the time being? And that can bring up a lot of fear. It can bring up a lot of pain. Where's the fear card? weird I can't even find it oh it's here yeah it could be bring up a lot of fear but there's some self-realization going on there's some realizations about you deserving to be happy and you deserving to uh, move forward there's a real sense and urgency of moving forward on your path because a lot of feminines have even um, not intentionally but had put their lives on hold myself included in many ways waiting for the masculine and you said you told yourself you weren't waiting but there was an energy of waiting and you did not allow doors to open or soulmates to come in so that's just something to consider here and I think also for some of you with this two of flames this two of wands it's do I have the ability do I have the power do I have the magic to lead others just with my light with my light of my spirit and my inner wisdom you know am I it's almost like, am I not good enough, but am I talented enough? Do I hold enough magic within me? Have I, have I graduated to that level? And for those of you asking, the answer is yes. You have enough fire within you. You have enough passion. It's been ignited within you. And yes, it is time to share with the world. The world is ready for that divine feminine, especially the world is ready for the healed divine masculine and the healed divine feminine. I've recently been introduced to the word activator as sort of a, instead of the word warrior, I've been introduced to activator. So I wondered what you guys thought of that, it's calling yourselves instead of a warrior, maybe some of you will resonate with the term activator. I'm here to activate, right? I'm an indigo, I'm activating. But I still identify with the term warrior. Um, I've been a warrior in many lifetimes. And so that is a deep part of me. But I, I feel like the term activator is kind of a, so, has a softer edge to it. So some of you may identify with that in addition to the term warrior. <laughs> Spirit wants to leave us with, Spirit's got tricks. Spirit wants to leave us with the moon card. <laughs> the night before, the day before the new moon, the full moon, excuse me. Spirit wants us to know, yes, there is a full moon uh, energy. There is illusion but there is this tidal wave there is this tidal energy this is a you wouldn't expect such power from the libra full moon you would expect this from an aries full moon or you would expect this from a scorpio full moon maybe sagittarius full moon like a leo full moon the fiery full moons you don't you wouldn't expect this from libra but this moon is hitting us hard okay it's hitting us really hard 
look out for illusions that um, are contained within yourself and look out for illusions in others as well because they're prevalent right now. Um, make sure that you're not allowing this energy to uh, sort of like take over is what I'm hearing. It says, Luna is truly the most curious of the celestial beings. No kidding. As she shows this perpetual changing face to us and those changing aspects appear to have a most dramatic effect on the tides of our emotional seas as they do on our great oceans we know this because both counterparts are in cups energy right now she does have a reputation for appealing to the darker side but luna is luminous reflecting the light of solar deity of the sun she's magnetic to the sun's electric she is cool to the sun's heat her reflective relationship to the sun is somewhat of a mirror for us to gaze into our deeper oceans and reflect upon our emotional ups and downs. She affects the cycles of female fertility in her monthly orbits around the earth. So many of you will be syncing up to the full moon as I myself am doing this month, like right on target, and many of my divine feminine friends who I'm not even in physical vicinity with or closeness with, but just because we talk every day or we talk consistently, our cycles line up and they've now lined back up with the full moon, which intensifies things even more. So some questions to ask yourself. Hi, how am I being moody and emotionally unsettled? Who, me? I feel called out. <laughs> I just feel called out by my own reading. Uh, emotions on high right now. I've been very bitchy. I've been very short with people, people in my life. What has me feeling out of balance? Why do I have such swings in emotion? What keeps me distracted from achieving joy in higher states of consciousness? Am I like the different phases of the moon? Why do I show only one face of the world and hide the other? What am I concealing? So some questions to ask yourself, guys, as we move into this full moon tomorrow in the sign of Libra. Those of you who are Libras are going to be feeling this extra, extra, extra special energy. And, um, you're also going to be feeling the, the energy of, it's just intense out there. What can I say? Uh, go watch the video that I posted this morning, guys, because it's a different kind of a video. It doesn't seem to be as popular when I talk about astrology, but I'm a big, big fan of astrology. And um, in fact, I'm, yeah, I'm going down that path. Um, talk more about that later. But there is definitely um, the energy contained within us right now, it's like explosive, okay? It's extreme. There's a lot of heat being generated right now in your body, in your in your cells, in your organs. And again, these hormonal changes, in addition to the full moon, in addition to your cycle, maybe syncing up with this full moon are causing a lot of disruptions and, and causing a lot of waves. So where the, the, the masculine energy within us and externally is appearing very, they're appearing as a master of their emotions. They're really, they're really not. It's an illusion. They're burning up inside, just like the feminine. They just haven't expressed it. They're holding back. But the feminine over here is like, ah, oh, I'm surfing the waves. And the masculine's like, I'm calm. I'm like a lake. And the feminine's like, I'm ready to explode. And the masculine's like, I'm having realizations. And the feminine's like, I'm experiencing powerful changes. So you can see how there's, there's some mirroring going on there. And mirroring doesn't mean you feel the same thing. It means you feel the opposite thing. So that's why when you feel angry, the masculine's feeling a longing or vice versa. It's kind of interesting. And, and that's until, you know, you come into this inner balance, which is being, um, which is happening. Okay. We're coming into inner balance more and more. It's uncomfortable. This process, nobody said this would be easy, guys. I do not sugarcoat. Uh, this is one of the hardest journeys your soul could possibly have chosen to undertake, but here we are. We're doing this together. If this video helped you, please do drop a like, subscribe to the channel, tap the bell icon to receive all notifications for when I post a video, go live, uh, post content in the community tab. Have a beautiful day, guys. Uh, thank you for all of you joining me over on Patreon. If you haven't already, go check out Patreon. And if you'd like a personal reading for the month of April, I am booking through April now. So you can reach out to me. The email is listed in the description box below. Have a beautiful Saturday, guys. Rest up, nourish your body, nourish your mind, nourish your heart, and just make sure you're honoring the time to take it easy. It's really important. Take great care, guys. I'll see you soon.